Well, it's springtime, and we are rolling into the baseball season at Oklahoma State. Well into it, as a matter of fact. And second weekend of conference play coming up for the Cowboys. The Baylor Bears will be here. And first chance to catch up with Josh Holliday. So good to be with you. And, and let's start here. There are several constants when it comes to your program. Winning big is obviously number one. And then, you know, reasons for that, obviously great hitting teams, a lot of power, pitchers that, you know, are really good on the mound, strike a lot of guys out. But each of the teams, it seems, have their own, they have their own niche. What's special, unique about this team so far? You're off to another good start, but what's special about it? What's unique? Anything? Well, this particular team's been uh, fun to to uh, to watch unfold because of how many guys are 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 breaking through and making their debuts on the mound. I think when you look at last year's team, I think ninety some odd percent of the innings thrown uh, walked out the door via graduation or the professional draft. I, I can't remember uh, any time in my my experience in doing this where that many quality innings walked out the door. And it's both good and bad. It's good because it meant those kids did a great job and moved on to the next step of their career. But it's tough because you're replacing so many emotional moments. The uh, the guy that's going to come in and start the Friday game and who's going to follow him up out of the pen, first out of the pen. And uh, obviously with Nolan back, we had somebody that could close games going into this thing. But I just think that the, the uh, emergence of so many new guys starting games, so many new guys touching the ball in new roles – has been something that's probably been different about this particular team. And thankfully, uh, we got a pretty solid core of everyday position players who played a lot together to kind of offset uh, the new faces going to the mound. And I think when you combine the newcomers on the mound, uh, the returners on the position player side, and just kind of the the blending uh, of the uh, uh, the chemistry of the team, it's been fun to see how that's played out over the first 20-some-odd games. And, and I think the kids have done a nice job. They've shown some resiliency in there. We've had some really, really good days. We've had some tough days. All things to be expected uh, when you start off on a new season. And I'd say after 20 games or whatever we're at right now, we're probably uh, in a pretty good place in terms of learning and, and knowing more about our team now than we did a month ago. So how has that changed how you've had to handle the first part of the season since it's been so different that way? Yeah, I, th I think Rob's done a great job of, of really having to uh, balance the – uh, desire each game to go out and be really aggressive to play to win, but also know early we were still getting guys in shape and uh, getting guys back to the mound and getting guys back in the fold. And so um, we feel like we're really in a pretty good spot right now health-wise. Our pitchers are getting stretched out. Uh, they're starting to get some stability and some durability built into their pitch count which is a super important thing to have. Some roles are slightly uh, being formed and established, which is always good for the guys to kind of know when to expect to get the call. Um, I think those things have been really positive. And, uh, you know, you, you start looking at uh, what lies ahead with some really challenging games. We're going to need every single one of those, uh, those guys in our bullpen uh, to be on point. And then the same with our position player lineup. We're going to need uh, all guys – uh, to be on point and ready for matchups. We've had some injuries on the position player side that have uh, shuffled the deck a little bit and, and allowed us to uh, tap into our depth and really, um, you know, use a, a pretty good chunk of this roster uh, each week to try to win the games. You were talking about everyday lineup. One unique piece to this is two-way players. I mean, some of your most prominent players, Nolan McClain, yeah. obviously is closing and is tied for the national lead in saves. So what type of dynamic does that create? I mean, not only McLean, but Benj is another. It's, you, you've got some two-way guys that are prominent both on the mound and in the everyday lineup. So, so how, do you, how do you handle that? Um, real carefully. Um, <laughs> I'll bet. Very thoughtfully. Um, those two kids are both amazingly talented guys. And what really probably makes them even more unique is as two-way players, they have no desire to stop doing either. Um, both are passionate about their hitting, both love to play and be on the field, and both have tremendous upside as pitchers. And uh, I think for us as coaches, the biggest thing is to constantly monitor their workload, constantly think about how to uh, use them effectively to allow them to go both ways, but also to protect them and make sure that uh, they're not being asked to do anything that's, that's outside of their body's ability to bounce back. And, and that's something that requires daily communication with the kids, 
Uh, they're both hard workers. They take good care of themselves. But, you know, you look back at last night, Carson Benj goes five innings. It's his longest outing since coming back. Uh, he threw the ball beautifully. He goes three for four. The one out he did make was a line drive off the fence that the guy caught. Um, it, it just shows you in one college baseball game how one kid can walk out there and do so many things so well. And that's a very, very unique player to do that. And uh, same could be said about Nolan. We've seen Nolan go up and – and uh, make an unbelievable play on defense, hit a 500-foot homer, and then come out and close the game throwing the ball in the upper 90s. So I don't know that maybe other than Matt Weeders, who I got the unique chance to coach at uh, uh, Georgia Tech, who was a two-way player, Mike Leake at Arizona State, I don't know that in 25 years of doing this I've seen uh, too many kids that can do what Nolan and Carson do. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because on the mental side, I would think it would take a unique person for this reason because these guys obviously have high professional aspirations. So there's probably a deal where one guy tells them, hey, you should be a pitcher. Another guy tells them, hey, you should be a hitter. And so, you know, managing all that stuff that probably yep. goes with it, does that take a unique person to just be able to sort of, hey, just go do what they do and, and eliminate the noise, so to speak? Yeah, those guys, they – uh they, they always have a good laugh about it. You know, both of them have red hair, and they, they, both, they both laugh that, you know, uh, we're, we got superpowers. You know, <laughs> they, uh, they, they enjoy the challenge of going uh, out and doing something that not many guys can do, and they've learned to kind of embrace it, have fun with it. Um, I think because they both have a passion to compete on a daily basis, the idea of pitching only doesn't uh, really appeal to them at this stage in their careers. Someday, if that's what uh, gets them to the big leagues and, and earns them a paycheck, I'm sure they'll adapt. But at this time, uh, I think both, you know, both players could be evaluated professionally as potential major league everyday players on the field and or potential everyday uh, major league pitchers. And so you go to college to allow more time for that to kind of sort itself out. And ultimately, someday, the people that uh, you know, write the paychecks, they'll, they'll, they'll kind of settle that for them. You were talking about roles on the pitching staff and, and the evolution of that. To, to what extent do you feel like your starting rotation is settled? Or is that still a process? Well, we've, we've been able to get uh, a number of guys' chances to start. Uh, obviously, Jerron has uh, done a really good job uh, to this point. Uh, he's had some really, really strong outings, so I feel good about where Jerron's at. Uh, Brian Hendry is a kid that going into this thing we felt like had a chance to be a starter. He was a little slower to get his pitch count built up, so he, uh, he didn't throw that first week of the year, but he did uh, make his way into the mix in week two and has done a nice job. Uh, ben Abram has worked his way into a swing role where he can either start for us or be a valuable bullpen piece. Uh, Brennan Phillips has had some good starts. Jansen Kiesel's had a handful of good starts. And uh, Carson Bench has had some starts. So we've, we've tried to get – multiple guys engaged in the starting process from the standpoint of uh, getting the pitch count built up, the emotional and mental side of starting a game, of how to prepare, how to get loose, how to go to the bullpen, get yourself ready, then walk to the mound and, and lead the team in from any number one on. And then we've had some guys, quite honestly, who had never thrown as relief pitchers before start to develop and learn the skill of being a relief pitcher. Uh, the one luxury item we've had is Isaac Stebbins was an All-American relief pitcher at Cali County Community College. So when we had to start to build this bullpen, we had one guy there who had embraced relief pitching and really knew what he was doing. And Isaac has been fantastic. So, you know, getting guys the, the uh, routine established on how to be a starting pitcher and how to go through it, how to take care of themselves, that's been good. We've had, I think, five or six different guys start games. Uh, but also guys learning how to become relief pitchers has been equally important because, as we all know, a lot of times those relief pitchers are asked to come in and kind of put out a fire or, or, or slow down an inning that maybe has built up some steam. And uh, we've had some guys really do a good job of learning how to do that. Drew Blake stands out for me. Isaac Stebbins stands out for me uh, of guys that have become very comfortable now uh, coming out of the bullpen. Gabe Davis is starting to develop some comfort coming out of that bullpen at Evan O'Toole. So four or five guys emerging with comfort in the relief uh, role and then another four or five guys that have 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 developed into starting pitcher options for us based on uh just where we're at at this point where we go from here uh probably week to week as we continue to see how guys develop it's an exciting weekend when it's the conference home series opener so to speak with baylor coming to town it, it's obviously the stakes get higher as we work our way through the conference season so but just some general thoughts on baylor obviously a team 
that, that seems to be going through a, a reloading process right now. Lost a lot of position guys, but your observations on what you've seen from them. Well, watch more about them or learn more about them today when I watched some film this evening. But, you know, Dave, it's gotten to the point now where, where baseball is such an amazing game that every single time you suit up and go out there, anything can happen. And it's just a matter of on that given day, how well you pitch it, how well you catch it, and, and the timeliness with which you hit. Um, every single game is a challenge. College baseball, the amount of parity, uh, and, and the way college sports now, teams can reinvent themselves rather quickly. Uh, a lot of the kids at Baylor that I recognize on the roster have played there and been in their uniform, so there's some familiarity with them, and some of those kids are pretty talented. So, you know, you don't really put a whole lot into maybe the stage of the other team as much as you just focus on the stage of where your team is at. And our team is in a position to continue to go out and try to work to get better at the game, try to master those key fundamentals that we know are so important. And at times this year, we've been able to do that. So uh, we're looking for the consistency on our end. We know everybody that comes in here is going to give us uh, the best effort they have. Um, what the personality of the other team is and what the experience level and talent level. Obviously, you know, from one team to the next, that can fluctuate. But what we need to do is just be the most constant version of us we can be uh, because we know everybody's going to be competitive. And uh, as we've seen, um, I, I look at the scores every night because kind of how I wind down. And every Tuesday, Wednesday, you, you look at scores, you go, oh, wow. And then you look on the weekends and you go, oh, gosh. Sometimes you don't see certain things coming. So the opponent takes a, a real secondary position when it comes to how important it is to be at your own best heading into these weekends. And we look forward to this weekend, the Cowboys and the Baylor Bears, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Obrate. And we'll see you next week.